Okay. There we go. Okay, we're live on YouTube as well. Oh, Johnny's here too. Neat. Yeah, Hi, Johnny. Teach me how to play Lustrals. You already know how to play. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. I actually do want to start with one thing because I always find it super useful. What I know, what I think I know, what I want to know. So I don't know where your level of knowledge base is for Lustrals right now, <laughs> Lolan. So we're going to start <laughs> right. with this. And just see what you have, and we'll go from there. Yeah, so I have never played an actual game, but I have watched a lot, a lot of videos on it. So, like, I think I understand the base rules of it, but um, obviously I haven't played any games before, so that's to be determined. <laughs> All right, so let's kind of, like, go through your confidence level. So what do you absolutely know for a fact about Elestrals? Where are you there? Like, do you, like, how do you, where do you sit yourself in knowledge base? Legitimately just do what I know, what I think I know, and just go from there. So, I know that at the start of a game, you have your uh, spirit deck, 20 cards on the left side. Um, then your main deck, 40 cards on the right side. And then, uh, to start the game, you draw five cards. Uh, both players draw five cards, and whoever is going first cannot draw a card or attack um to you can only play like normal summon or play one elestral from your hand per turn and you need to ha uh to play like a with the one spirit cost you need to pull the spirit from your deck is that right yep you all is good so far okay yeah, and then to ascend or evolve or whatever, you need to uh, like have you need to have the necessary spirits for that. So ascending is a little bit weird, I get, but so you don't necessarily need the correct spirits, but you need to have the correct number of spirits. The number, yeah, minus one because yep. you're always adding one from the deck. <clears throat> okay, does that make sense? I think so. so I think if you I'll have it better once we get into a game. Yeah, so if you have a two cost Elestral, in order to cast yeah. that Elestral, since your normal cast or your normal action can only be one spirit a turn, you have to have one spirit in play on an Elestral to ascend that Elestral to a two cost because you're always going to add one from the spirit deck. Got it, got it, got it. What else? Um, and then, can any Elestral ascend? To any other Elestral? Yep. Is that correct? Okay. Like, there's benefits to staying within, like, the evolution line sometimes, but it yeah. really doesn't matter. Like, in theory, you can Got ascend it. your Pantera into a Boom Bat if you wanted to. Okay, so you can ascend from a higher cost to a lower cost if you wanted to? Yep. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so if the Elestral has the correct spirits attached to it, it's considered enchanted and can use the additional effect in the text box. If it yep. just has the number of spirits, it's disenchanted, can still attack or defend, but cannot use the effect. Yep. Um, there's nexus thing which i believe is just moving a spirit around on the board like just like once per turn so without like any special effects you can only nexus when a card tells you to nexus okay got it so that means if a card says nexus up to two you can move zero one or two spirits from one location to another location got it got it it would winning be a game Sorry, go ahead. It would be nice if we could move spirits whenever we want, but that's not that's unfortunately yeah. not the case. Uh, yeah, I got it. Um to win the game, your opponent needs to run, either run out of cards in deck or run out of spirits. Yes, so running out of either deck will lose you the game when you're forced to basically expand or draw from those respective decks. <clears throat> yeah. Anything else you feel super confident on? 
when it comes to super confidence not really there's a couple <laughs> other things i'm like iffy about like the chain stuff all right so let's let's start with the what i think i know since you have a pretty good basis i think to start with what i know so what do you think is correct but you're not sure of? uh chaining rule <laughs> okay so what are you not sure about with chains right now uh i guess the the way it was described in the videos i watched was a little confusing to me but i think that could be resolved once i see it in action right so generally chains are very simple until you get to some like kind of niche things now mm -hmm. have you ever played Yu Gi Oh or magic the gathering at all very lightly i was very big into pokemon and still am but i i only like dabbled in the other two okay yeah because chains in illustrials works a little bit of a hybrid between magic and uh Yu -Gi -Oh in terms of like rule set we'll go into chains a little bit more but f most chains are generally i cast this then you cast this your thing resolves then my thing resolves for the Got most it. part um, yeah. I know Pokemon doesn't have a ton of like chains and stack situations because very very rarely can an opponent activate something on your turn in Pokemon. Right. Uh, what else do you think you know but you're not confident on? Um, rune types. Just yeah. the specifics of that. Yeah, so rune types, um, I, that's a little bit of a complaint from a lot of people. Uh, if you have a physical deck on you, there is a cheat sheet in it, but if you're just picking up from the app, there's no great way to tell them apart. Um, the symbols right. are a little... They lead a little bit of managing for the most part. How card effects read, you can tell what type they are, where invokes are usually just like... So you do something. Counter runes usually have a trigger on them of some kind where you need to wait for something to happen, and so forth. But we can go over rune types uh, a little bit more in depth in a moment. What else? Okay. Um... I'm trying to think here. There's nothing like immediately coming to mind. All right, then we just, I mean, what I think I know is always kind of the hard part. And what do you want to know? Yeah. Obviously, how to play the game. <laughs> right. I want to, after I get a basic understanding of the game, I want to learn the meta. Like what what decks yep. are popular and all of that and how to like find the cards that are popular. Have you taken a peek at the Twitter stuff recently about Elestials? Because they usually post about um, the meta decks and stuff uh, after yeah, each I tournament. Yeah, I peeked at it. Yeah, there's not yeah, a ton of it, information really there. The yeah, there's not a ton of information there for like what the deck composition is, but we can definitely pull that up later and go over deck composition. Got it, got it. Anything else that you really want to learn before we kind of jump in and start kind of deck building and tinkering with things? I think I'm just ready to jump in. Okay. Well, let me close this for now. Okay, so I guess we can start with a little bit of deck building, just kind of go over card type. So jump into the catalog. You can see my screen, all that, right? Uh, the What I know is still up in front right. of that. Why is that still there? Oof. There we go. Haha. -ha. I am I know what I'm doing, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um so actually can I sort this by sort of. So let's actually start with I guess the rune type since that came up. Okay. Hello? Does that not work? I don't know if the sorting works. That's weird usually does um it worked for me i think hmm well i don't know if the sorting is working for me or not it doesn't look like it is so i'm just gonna go find an invoker real fast oh they're all at the bottom that's filtering backwards for me that might be why I'm just going to advanced sorting stuff. There we go. Now they're all at the top. All right. So invoke runes, right? It's that yep. kind of diamond shape, right? So each rune type has a different symbol. Mm -hmm. So that like star with the kind of star diamond shape, that would be an invoke rune. Do you know when invoke runes can be cast? Are those the ones that can just be cast at any time during your turn? 
Anytime during your turn, correct. So yep. counter runes are a little bit different. We'll get to those next. But invoke runes, rule of thumb, is only during your main phase and only on your turn. And you can cast right. any amount of invoke runes you want as long as you can meet the cost for them. Unlike Elestrals where you can just cast Elestrals as many, or rather one a turn per spirit, so on and so forth. Yeah. We'll so get to normal casting in a second. Yeah, go ahead. To cast a rune, do you just pull the necessary spirits from your deck to use it? Yep. So and if then... you're playing, let's say, uh, let me pull up something. Let's pull up before I just go through all of them. Neck to the Gods, right? Yep. Draw two cards. So to play Neck to the Gods, as you say, I'm going to play Neck to the Gods. I'll take two spirits from my spirit deck, whichever two spirits you want. Cast Neck to the Gods. Draw two cards. Oh, look, you drew another Neck to the Gods. Cool. I'm going to play this Neck to the Gods. Pull another two spirits. Cast the card. Just yeah. when it's an invoke, just runes in general, you can use, you can <clears throat> basically just cast as many as you want, whenever you want, as long as the casting timing and requirements are met. Got it. Quote unquote. So invoke runes oh. generally will always use something in main turn. Again, there's like Nether Gods, there's like Earthquake, it's just Destroy Elestral, stuff like that. Then we have counter runes. So Gorgon's Gate is kind of like the poster child for strong counter runes. It's considered one of the best cards in the game. But counter runes kind of look like the invoke symbol with like a little eye or shield over the symbol. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of memorization, I know, for the symbols, right? Because like that, uh, let me just uh, find my screen. There we go. This little symbol, like it will be changed in future sets where I think set three, they'll have the name of the type of rune running down the side. So you'll know that better. Okay. But for now, this is a counter rune. It looks like a little eye or shield over the invoke symbol. Yep. Uh, counter runes work like trap cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, where you can you have to set them for at least one turn before right. you can activate them. So on your turn during your main phase, you can put it face down in your rune row. You don't have to pay for the cost of it until you actually flip it over. But then anytime okay. after you end your turn, you can flip it over. Specifically this, as long as you can target Elestral, you can activate it at mm -hmm. any point in time. So if I play it in my main phase, Pass to my next my opponent's turn on their draw step, main phase, battle phase, whatever you want. You can flip it over and use it. When it comes back to your turn, you can use it anytime during your turn again, as long as it's been face down and one end phase has passed. So that makes sense? Yeah. Uh, so counter runes. And next up, we'll go the next most relevant type would be a divine rune. We'll take a look at something like Poseidon. So divine runes have this kind of like laurels looking shape to them. Mm-hmm. And they can be played the same time as like invoke runes where only during your main phase they all cost one of the respective element but they do have all an ability that says when you cast it you can enchant up to an additional three spirits to it okay so divine runes are very very relevant because they're kind of considered nexus banks they're ways to get lots of spirits onto the board really really quickly got it because, you know, you just play this for one, and then you can choose up to three more water, and all of a sudden it's got, like, three, four water on it, depending on how much you want to put onto it. Okay. And then you can use effects like, say, Aphros or, like, Dark of the Sky, things that say Nexus Spirits. So these are great ways to get spirits on board to then use cards that say Nexus to move them around. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, Poseidon here says you can Nexus one spirit from this Poseidon to another card. So basically, you can just load up Poseidon, and then once a turn use its ability to then pass its water away. I will... Okay, got it. I'm going to pause here really quickly to go over ability types because there's two ability types on this card. <clears throat> the first ability is cards that are better their ability, sorry, that start, let's say, when. This is a triggered ability, and whenever you meet the requirement after it, you can do the ability. So this is when you cast this Poseidon. So every time mm -hmm. you cast Poseidon, in theory, you can cast this Poseidon, then the next Poseidon, then the next Poseidon. You can use that wind effect any amount of times in turn as long as you meet the requirement. A better uh, source of that would be like Drataya real quick. So Drataya says, when a player casts Ambrosia, you can draw two cards. Fairly straightforward. If someone plays Ambrosia, you can draw two. You play another Ambrosia the same turn, you can still draw two again. Okay. That's just a triggered passive effect. Or rather, triggered effects, passive effects will go into last. But then you also have active effects. If we go back to Poseidon, because uh, all the divines generally have a passive and an active. Or sorry, triggered and active. The next ability is you can. 
Abilities that start with you can are once a turn during your main phase. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Just yeah. you can access one water on your turn during your main phase. Yeah. So if you play additional Poseidons, each one can use that you can ability, but this specific Poseidon will not be able to cast it again. Or use its ability okay. again, sorry. Um, a lot of people get tripped up because they see something like Zeus, where it changes attack and defense, so they think, oh, I can use this on my opponent's turn. You can't. Unless it specifically tells you that you can use something on your opponent's turn or it's a counter rune, you can't. So this Zeus is you can change up to three, and then it's you can, again, one turn of your main phase, disenchant thunder from the Zeus in order to target opponent, yada, yada, yada. Uh, that's so Invoke Counter, Divine... Stadium's really easy. It's like a Pokemon stadium. So yep. there can only be one in play, and they have a passive effect. So Illustrials that are water enchanted get one and one. Straightforward. If your opponent plays one, it gets destroyed. And then... Yeah, it's exactly like a Pokemon. Is it field card right. or stadium card? I forget how it's stadium. called. In Pokemon. Yeah, so it works just like that. One in play at yep. all times. Both players benefit or are detrimented by it, no matter what. And then the last rune type are artifacts, which look like this. Again, it's going to take a little bit to learn the symbols. That's fine. It's a sticking point for a lot of new players, so don't worry if you forget what a symbol means or looks like. Yeah. But artifacts are like equipment in most games, so you can just pay the spirit cost. The spirits stay on the card because it's uh, the only... Well, I didn't go over permanent and instant. Or continuous in instance but it's a continuous rune all our equipment are continuous so you play it down with the two spirits the spirits stay with it and you empower or empower you can be synonymous with equip and illustrial gets in this case extra five attack and then there's some more abilities to this card but they all just generally do the same thing they all equipped and then do something fairly straightforward so I have a question yes so you the spirits stay attached to is it the artifact is that what it just was yes so there's generally two types of cards you have continuous cards and instant cards instant mm -hmm. cards are categorized currently to just invokes and counter runes where they do their thing they leave play and take all their spirits with them got it every other card type in the game so all the other runes like stadiums divines elestrals all stay on field as continuous cards with their spirits that they attach to so if we jump into training real quick. Um, the app isn't automatic for everything, so that is a little awkward for new players. But I will go over it real fast here. Let me show you my board. I'm going to ask me mulligan. I'm just going to keep it real quick. So if I were to say cast this earthquake, right? So mm -hmm. I have an Earthquake down here. It costs two Earth. I'll cast it. I'll select the Spirits for it. I would use it, and since it's an Invoke Rune, it would immediately go to the Underworld. However, you have to manually do that in the game right now because the game's not automatic. But something yeah. like an Elestral, fairly straightforward. Elestral obviously will end up on the board with a Spirit, and it will stay there. If I go find... Okay. Divine rune real quick and add it to my hand. And then same thing with like a divine rune. I would cast it. Then its ability will activate where I can then enchant an additional up to three. And it will stay on board with those spirits. Got it. But something like this poison. And so. Yep. So if the artifact is attached to an Elestral, are those spirits that are attached to the artifact only on the artifact, or does the Elestral now have the ability to use those artifacts or, like, Nexus from it? The artifacts are just completely separate. Do I have an artifact in this okay. deck? Let me see. I don't. Hold on. Let me go grab an artifact, and I'll show you how it works. So the artifacts are actually coded decently well, uh, even in the... Um, let me pull that up so you can see the whole thing. So I know in this deck I have a bunch of artifacts. That up. So artifacts are independent, like they're equipped or empowered to an Elestral, but they still kind of exist and behave on their own. Okay. So let me go browse. We'll go grab cards quick. All right, so 
let's put this into play. I'll cast this Sluggle real fast. And then I want to empower it with this Trident of Poseidon. I will cast the Trident of Poseidon for two. I'll empower this Sluggle, which it actually links it together, even though it's all manual. So they're separate entities, but they're linked together. Oh, so see. if I were to destroy this Sluggle, it will also go to the Underworld, in theory. Okay, it's not working. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but okay. yeah, so that would get destroyed because now there's what is empowering isn't in play anymore. But it's still separate as its own. You can, if you get a card that says Nexus, move spirits from it to another card, but it will still get destroyed for being under enchanted. Do you know how right. under enchantment works? Uh, kind of. So if, if an Elestral is on the field and it doesn't have the necessary number of spirits attached, it just gets destroyed. Yep. So this Majesty right here has three. If I were to say, do something like disenchant or Nexus one spirit away from it for whatever reason. It would now be at two less than three. It has to just be destroyed, and as well as all the spirits attached, so it will go to the underworld. Mm -hmm. It's not super easy to have under enchanted elestrals unless you actively force an under enchantment through an effect like Boom Bat or through an effect like a Nexus to take them away. But yeah, if it's under enchanted, it would get destroyed. Got it. Um, so that's a long little roundabout way to go over all the runes. Do you want to just jump into a game and just kind of feel it out from there? Or how do you want yeah, to sure. proceed? Okay. So let me go play. Hello, Nathan. Things are going well. I'm just helping Alolan. Alolan? I got the name right. It's Alolan, right? <laughs> Alolan Tales, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go to PvP. Have you tinkered with the app? Are you comfortable with it? or? Um, I've tinkered with everything except for like the uh, battle stuff itself okay so i'm gonna go make a private clash in atlantis you want to go uh that'll work i gave ship um, yep so if you want to just go to atlantis and join the game and i'll walk you kind of through it and yeah uh, i actually just taught my brother it. how to play like a week ago <laughs> so nice. I'll help you kind of walk through, and after like a game or two, you'll pretty much know what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, give me just a second. I needed to select the deck. Yep. Any of the star decks should be fine. Just don't pick the water star yeah. deck. It's not good. <laughs> or, what is that, Majesty? Yeah. Unfortunately, that starter deck is a little bit lacking compared to the rest of them. That's unfortunate, because I ordered one the other day. <laughs> it has really good cards. It does have really yeah. good cards. So it's not a bad pickup. It's the yeah. deck is as constructed really really wonky to play but if you just add a little bit of fire to it you can just play the krakatuga side of the deck and krakatuga is actually pretty relevant as a, it's one of the better yeah, burn yeah. decks so it's not a bad pickup it's just <laughs> the most awkwardly built starter deck in the game right now got it yeah um so how do i join your match i clicked so atlantis go to atlantis like, like find or private uh go to private and then go to Okay. Find game, I think, is the button. And I should be right there with join or uh if okay. only it gives me the option for host game and game list. Oh, there it is. Got it. Yep. I know the there app it's a little bit of a learning curve with the app. It's yeah. one guy working on it. He's doing a great job. We love you, Steve, but yeah, it's it's yeah. it's getting there. Alright, so I'm going to actually knock this out and just blow up the boards. So obviously it's a coin flip. Uh, you get to choose first or second. Going first, usually the better option. There are there's a couple decks that like to go second, but not many. I will keep my okay. hand. So obviously, you're going first, so you didn't draw an yeah. extra card. And hopefully you have right. one cost celestial to play. I believe so. Here, I need to adjust my screen so I can see the whole board one second. Yeah, there is a, in the UI. I know there's a way to enlarge and just, like just change the actual like sizing yeah. of all the things. All right, I do have one one cost, so I will cast that real quick. Bertaqua, that's always a solid one. <laughs> okay, and I'm trying to read what it says here. It keeps. <laughs> 
Control battle on defense with a defense position at Lestral. You can suppress the Lestral and destroy it if you do. But this Ventropo deals no damage about. So does that mean there has to be a defense position when on field for this effect to come into play? It's when you attack a defense Celestial. So yes. Oh, so when it. he when he attacks, so in the battle phase, when you declare your attacks and you choose to attack a defense position Celestial with it, it will suppress it, meaning that it will remove all the abilities off the card. Kind of how like when it's misenchanted, it has no abilities. Yeah. And then it will destroy it. So there's cards that like to do things when they get destroyed, like Hydrake, Twindra, Pantera, Foamy. A few cards in the set right now. There's a few more coming out. In the next set mm -hmm. so basically says okay whatever abilities you have don't exist and now i'm destroying you so it stops things from quote unquote floating is a Yu-Gi-Oh term people use or basically just activating their effects from battle so if they have an effect that says oh when i'm attacked it won't activate or when i get destroyed it won't activate and then it destroys them okay uh and then the deals no damage this battle part is there's a few very, very rare instances where you might accidentally destroy a thing and still being able to do damage, but I wouldn't worry too much about that last sentence too much. The important okay. part is that it removes abilities and destroys defense position electrals automatically before the battle's finished. There's a few okay. steps to battle. We'll go over that when we actually have a battle. Okay. And then I don't think any of the runes in my hand would be good to play right now. I have two, uh, it's hard for me to see the name because I don't have a very good monitor. I think it's Tsunami. So Tsunami Change is a counter rune. Shows. So Tsunami is a very good counter rune to go face down, especially over Takwin play. <sighs> okay, got it, got if it, got it. If you click on the card, it should blow up the card size. Yeah, but the, the top is being, the, the name at the top is being blocked okay, by so the look, little banner. Uh, let me go show you. So I actually have a Tsunami in my hand right now, if you look at okay. my screen. Right, and it's doing the same thing as yours, I'm assuming, where it's all at the top. Yeah. If you yeah. click and drag the large and large image, it'll let you move it wherever you want on the screen. Um In theory. It's not letting me do that. Are you on blue stacks right now? Yeah. Blue stacks can be very oh, finicky sometimes. There it is. Yep. <laughs> I got it now. Got it. So that would be a good one to uh put face down, yep. Yeah. So I just press cast. So hit cast, and then there's a button on the bottom that says face down. Yep. And then you hit confirm. Ignore the fact that I'm doing it right now in the game. I'll just put got it in my hand. Got it. Yeah, so Tsunami is cool. a really, really good defensive rune in the game because yeah. water elestrals aren't super widely played in the meta right now. Mm -hmm. So it's usually used to just stop things from being able to attack your elestrals. So something like, if I were to play an Elestral now in my turn that could attack your Vertaqua, you could, in theory, Tsunami it before the attack goes through, put it in defense, and then, hey, you have Vertaqua that can automatically kill it on your turn. Kind of how that it. plays. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then I also have Island of Aeolia and Anambrosia, and then another Tsunami. Yeah, so Island wouldn't do too much here. You could always put the right. second Tsunami face down. You generally don't need to. Right. And it kind of becomes a meta call of, do I think my opponent's going to try to make me discard cards? Or is he going to try to destroy my back row? Right. right now, it's way more common to see things destroy back row. Mm -hmm. But there are there is at least one meta deck called Thunder Nexus that does like ripping cards from hand. Obviously... So Turn one, it's difficult to determine what your opponent's playing as to what's the better option here, but usually it's better to put it face down as well. So does back row mean the rune row? Yes, so generally people refer to the okay. the lustral rows as your front row, the back row is your rune rows, and the stadium slots up on the top here, and then your underworld's above your deck. So for mm -hmm. you, this is your stadium, it's your underworld. Got it. Got it. Okay. And then I think I just end phase, right? Yep, so the timer in the bottom right should be end turn or end phase. The Should be one of the options. Got it. Cool. All right, so I'm going to start my turn. I drew, obviously, because I'm going second, and I do have a battle. Hey, Luck, how's it going? Uh, I'm going to cast... Um, I don't want to cast it because you have a card that's... 
gonna stop it, but I do want to use its effect, so I'm gonna have to use it anyway. So I'm gonna cast an Ash Rabbit in defense. Okay. With one thunder. So Ash Rabbit has an ability called a receive ability. So it says when this Ash Rabbit receives one or more thunder, you can look at the top three cards of your deck, add one of them to your hand, shuffle the rest of your deck. Receive okay. triggers whenever something gains that element that it says receives blank. So this says receives one or more thunder. When I cast it, casting also counts as receiving. I could also potentially re-enchant it on my next turn or use a card like a Nexus card to move spirits to it. Each of those would be considered receiving. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Um, so one thing to note is if, like, say I have a card called Circle of Sky that lets me Nexus up to two. If I were to move two Thunder to Ash Rabbit, it would only affect, it would only trigger the receive effect once because it says receives one or more. One or more. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to use its effect, and its effect is I can look at the top of my deck, and there's actually a button on top of my deck that says look. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do three cards. Firm. And I have my three options. Um, it's okay if you see my options. I, we're, we're learning, right? Yeah. And I'm actually going to take this Earthquake, because I really don't want your Vertakwa to live. I'm going to add it to my hand. And then I have to manually shuffle my deck here, because it doesn't do that for me. Got it. And now I'm going to actually cast my Earthquake on your Vertaqua. So I'm going to pay two Earths for that, and it's going to target your Vertaqua, and that will make you have to destroy your Vertaqua, since it's just target, destroy, okay. and lustral. So there it. should be a button that just says destroy. Got it. And then I'm going to put one of my cards face down. And I'll end my turn here. We'll go to end, confirm, and now it's your turn. Got it. So since I cast that rabbit in defense, I can't change its battle position until the following turn. You can only change the position of an Elestral once. On the turn, it was not cast. Okay. Okay. Okay, so unfortunately, I do not have any Elestrals I can cast. So do you remember all the actions you can do with your normal per turn? Uh, so I can normal summon a one spirit, right? Correct. That's I one of them. Can... There's four total, so that's one. Okay, I can play or cast any runes or counter rune or whatever that's just a kind of i guess you can say it's a free action that wouldn't be a normal action okay um you can change the position of an elestral also technically a free action <laughs> all right okay. so let, let's just punch there okay so your normal action there's four things you can do if you had the physical deck on you it'd be so much easier oh. it's on the cheat sheet <laughs> yeah uh, i remember one i can uh use my spirit to draw a card can i exactly that's what i was trying to point you to so you can Got expend it. one spirit to draw one card okay. so you just go into your deck hit the expend button and then select okay. one pick whatever you want to ditch and then select draw one from your deck cool so there's always something you can do you don't always want to expend a draw because you know you might be killing mm. yourself there but it's always an option if you don't really have a Good enough play. Got it. So I'm going to play Tornado. Yep. <laughs> so it's one wind. If you select it in your hand and hit cast, it'll automatically prompt you to... Got it. So you I'm know, just going to put it back can... in my hand to do it that way. Yep. You could also, if a card's in play, you could also just hit uh, Enchant and then add a spirit to it that way, but it's usually okay. easier just to cast it with the correct spirits. Got it. And that will return a rune so, to my hand. So I use that to... Yep. Yep. And then this immediately gets, gets destroyed. destroyed? Correct. Okay. One second. My, the card is blocking the yep. actions buttons. Yeah, I know. Sometimes the resolution makes it really weird where the yep. card flips. Kind of sits. Okay. Well, there's something else I think I could really do right uh nope since you use your normal uh you could potentially set another rune if you wanted to um 
Like if you want to put, you said you had another tsunami in your hand. If you want to put that face down now, you could. Yeah. There's options. Okay. It's just you can't normal cast or ascend, or expend a draw or reenchant an celestial. Those are your four yeah. actions. So just to review quick, your normal action, as we call it, uh, we're kind of pushing the judges to make normal action the actual term for it, and they might make it the normal term. But the normal action is you can do one of four things. Normal cast at one cost celestial, ascend an celestial with one spirit from your spirit deck, expend one spirit to draw, or enchant one celestial and play with one spirit. All got use it. one spirit from your spirit deck to do something. Yeah, got it. All right, so I guess I will play or put down another counter rune. And then I'll just end my turn. Has it been the actual turn? <laughs> I'm assuming someone's saying it's the actual um, term. <laughs> One second. Um, you want to cast that face down? Oh, uh, sorry, I thought I did. <laughs> All good. So you can just uh, here. I'll help you quick. Should be able to drag this back to your spirit deck, or maybe not. You can, if you click the spirit, the little icon, you can drag that to your spirit deck and drag the card back to your hand. Okay. It's not letting me do that. Let me try. Let me see if I can help you here. Uh, you can, there's also a two hand button, but that will send your spirit to the underworld, which is fine. We can you can recover it out of the underworld and fix that. So I might just have to do that. Okay. Yeah, again, on blue stacks, the I don't know if it's something to do with like the instances of it, but yeah, it luck normal like normal action wasn't a term for a while. If it is now, I appreciate it because it makes it so much easier to categorize things. <laughs> Sorry, right. just talking to chat. <laughs> yeah, normal action was something that like for a while I was told it's not the actual term, but I guess it now is, and I just missed the memo. Okay, got the spirit back in my spirit deck. Yep, so if you want to so, just... So if you hit cast Tsunami, make sure you hit the phase down button. Right. Got it. Cool. Got it. And now I can end. Yep. Uh, Matt, Newton, thoughts on adding a fifth normal to recover a spirit to the spirit deck? That honestly would probably break a lot of things, especially go into Frostfall, because there's a card that specifically triggers when you recover spirits. So cool idea, probably not balanced. Alright, my turn. Um so I'm actually gonna use my normal action here to enchant my rabbit, and since it now received, I'm going to use defect again. I'm gonna look my top three. And I'm going to pick this guy because my deck is built around him. We'll get to him a little bit later. And look at all this card advantage I'm generating off Ash Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Ash Rabbit is considered one of the best celestials in the game right now. FYI. Uh, so you okay. will see a lot of him. Even in Got decks it. that aren't Thunder focused, you will see a lot of Ash Rabbit. Got it. I will set this face down. Put this face down. And then I'm going to change this to attack position now. I'm going to go to my battle phase. And then since you have no Elestrals, I'm going to attack your spirit deck directly. So okay. since I'm attacking, I want to go over attacks real quick. There's three steps to each attack. It's the declaration, the battle okay. step, and then the damage step. Mm -hmm. When I declare an okay. attack, you have the option to chain counter runes to try to prevent the attack. So something okay. like your Tsunami here, if you turn my Astrabit to defense position, the attack would become illegal and I wouldn't actually be able to attack. So that's an okay. option you have. So I will do that then. Okay. Do I... Uh, so if you click on the right. face down card, there should be a cast button. Got it. And then it'll prompt you through there. And Got that would then change all non-water and change celestial, so that will turn him to defense. And since now and the then... attack's no longer legal, the attack step will end. Now in theory, since you didn't negate the attack, you just stopped it. If I had a way to put Rabbit back into attack position, which there's not many ways to do that in the game right now, I could in theory attack again. Okay. But I have no way to do that right now. The only card you're going to see that consistently can do that is called Ultra the Stars. I don't run it in this deck. 
Okay. Um, so it's just good to note that it doesn't negate the attack, so in theory, it can still attack again if I had a way to attack again with it. I just can't right now. Okay. And then uh, my Tsunami goes in the Underworld? Yep. So it's an instant rune. Counters are part of the instant rune category. It would just get destroyed now. Technically, cool. it's never in play. It's in Limbo, but that's details we'll get to later when we actually start a chain. Like an actual okay. chain chain. <laughs> Right, yeah, so I okay. will end my turn here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to cast this Exaltair. Okay. Um, And then would that be a good now be a good time for me to play Island of Veolia? It would be all right. Uh, it would definitely okay. buff your uh, Exalt Terror. I'll tell you right now, I have no stadiums in this deck, so it'd be okay. kind of difficult for me to destroy your stadiums. Okay. So it's not a it's not a bad play to put it, Island in play now. Got it. Cool. So now your Exalt Terror would be at four attack, three defense. Which I think uh, that there's... just if I were to attack you, that would just negate since your defense is higher. Uh, defense is higher. Yeah, so it wouldn't do anything basically. Okay. Um, so in order to destroy something, you have to either meet its attack value or higher if it's attack position. If it's in defense, mm -hmm. you have to be higher than the defense value. And if they're Got equal, it. they would both get destroyed, or well, equal attack and attack position both get destroyed. Equal defense to the attack, nothing happens. They just quote unquote bounce. Got it, got it. So there's really no point in me attacking. Nope. Since nothing would happen. Okay. Um I think then I can end my turn. Alright. I'm going to cast one of my favorite cards in the game, Jotaya in defense. I'm playing a pretty defensive focused deck, by the way, just so you know. So um, I will say I'm playing a deck called Fruit. Everyone in the community knows me for this deck. It's generally a combo control deck. So generally I'm going to stock up resources and then just play a card called Lodagon and blow up a bunch of stuff and try to win with Lodagon. Just so you know what okay. you're aware of what you're waiting for. Uh, okay. Lodagon's in my hand right now, if you want to take a peek at what he does, since we're in the learning game. It's a two-cost okay. that whenever a player casts Ambrosia or Golden Apple of Discord, I can target and destroy a card. So usually this deck is play Lodagon, play a bunch of Ambrosias in the same turn, and blow up stuff and then start attacking with Lodagon. Got Generally it. what okay. my goal is here. Uh, you're playing the Windstarter deck, I think? Pinterre, yeah. Yeah, so generally the Pinterre, what you're trying to do is get either Aeolus or Hydrake in play to get Hydrake in play and then generally let your Hydrake die to get Twindra and let Twindra die to get Pentair. That's the goal of that deck. And then Pentair is this okay. big giant beat stick of a month. Right. Um, I have nothing else I want to do here. Uh, okay. No reason for me to attack, so I'm going to end my turn. Cool. Okay, so I can um, ascend this Twindra in my hand to this Exaltair, right? Yep, so you would hit, okay. so you can click on Exaltair and hit the ascend button. It'll prompt you with your hand, select one you want to ascend into, and the A-Spirit you want to use for it. The app is pretty nice and does most of that for you. Cool. Yep. So now that Twindra has a whopping 7 attack because of the island. <laughs> Got it. So. Would it be smarter for me to attack into the Ash Rabbit? That is a really good question. So if you didn't have knowledge of my hand, Ash Rabbit would be the better option in most circumstances here. But you also know that I have a lot of gun in my hand. That is, that is a okay. two earth card. 
So I can ascend Retrataya with one Earth to get Lodagon in play properly enchanted, but I could also potentially fish for more cards with my Ash Rabbit. Kind of where your decision making has to hit a spot. <laughs> Just like, okay. you know, figuring out what you want to do. So with that knowledge, I feel it would be smarter to attack the Drataya. Okay. So. I'll say there's no quote unquote good answer here. <laughs> they're both yeah. bad. Like they're both like, but that's Drataya is probably the better option here. Okay. So I will, in the main phase, I'll select Jataya. Yep, and that will destroy my Jataya. Now, if my Jataya was in attack position, right, you would be mm -hmm. able to um, deal damage to my spirit deck because you have a two spirit Illustral over my one spirit Illustral. But okay. since Jataya was in defense, I don't take any additional damage. That's kind of another benefit of being in defense position over attack position. So if it was three versus one, it would get rid of two spirits then if it was in attack position? Exactly. 100%. Cool. Oh, wait, I didn't end my turn. My bad. All good. And you're coming from uh, Pokemon TCG, so I don't have to tell you there's no main phase two because there's no main phase two in Pokemon either. Right. <laughs> Okay, uh, how do I want to do this turn? There's some fun stuff I can do here. So I'm going to do the fun stuff to kind of go over how chains are made. So I'm going to start by casting Rise from the Ashes, which allows me to Special cast an Elestral from my Underworld in attack position. So I'm going to actually go and special cast my Jataya back into play if I press the right button. Uh -uh. <laughs> There's Browse and Manage, and one does one thing, one doesn't. Yeah. And that's going to go into text position. So now, since I'm special casting it, whenever you special cast a card, you always enchant it with the minimum required to cast it. So in this case, it'd okay. be one. If I say special cast a three cost, I would be able to just pull three spirits from my deck to stick it onto it. Okay. So, for example, if your Twindra dies, it says you special cast to Pantera, right? Yeah. That would be your Twindra would go to the Underworld. It would take all of its spirits with it. You would find Pantera in your deck, and then you put Pantera into play, and then add three spirits to it from your spirit deck if it were to get destroyed. Okay. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit more when we get there. So now, that was a special cast. I'm going to now ascend using my normal action, since I have not used that yet, to get my Lodagon into play. Got it. So this is my, uh, my boss of the deck, basically. Yeah. And I will cast... Ambrosia, which have you seen what Ambrosia is yet? It is an extremely yeah, stable card. It returns card. three spirits. Yep, so I'm going to cast it. Ambrosia here. So this technically isn't making a chain just yet. I'm going to go into a little bit of nuance here because it's somewhat relevant. Mm -hmm. So chain link one right now is Ambrosia. Okay. When a card is in the process of being cast, so this is not cast yet. So you notice how Lodagon says when it's cast? Yeah. So cast is the resolution of a card. So right now this is just chain link one. I'm using Ambrosia. It's going to resolve. So I'm going to use its effect. It's going to resolve. I'm going to get my spirits back. And now that it's cast, we have a new chain forming. So in this chain link one, it ended. And now this will trigger because now that that's resolved, it's now considered cast. This effect will activate. I'm going to use this effect to destroy your island. Okay. Destroy. Got it. And then I will attempt... Well, let's move this into attack position. And then I'm going to attempt to attack 
your Twindra. And this is okay, where... So... Okay, I'll let you think about what you want to do here, and then I'll right. go over some more complex stuff. Yeah, so, like, normally I would think I would want to play the uh, rune, but if this gets destroyed, I can just get the Pinter out. Wouldn't that be better? That would be a good idea. But okay. I also want to have you think for a second. So, do you remember what Gorgon's Gaze does? Uh, not off the top of my head. So Gorgon's Gaze negates and suppresses an Elestral's ability. Oh, uh, I see. So, I will tell you right now, every deck in competitive play has three Gorgon's Gazes. Okay. The fact that I have two cards face down means that I probably have a Gorgon's Gaze face down. Got it. In the so, uh, do you remember how I mentioned there's three steps to each battle? Yeah. So there's the attack step where I declare attacks, right? Mm-hmm. After the attack step ends and you go into the battle step, attacks cannot be stopped, positions cannot change, but you can still activate effects. So a really common counter to the Pantera strategy is to attack into a card like Twindra or uh, Hydrake. Yeah. Let the attack step pass with no response, and then activate Gorgons in the battle step when the attack can no longer be stopped, but abilities can activate. I can still stop your Hydrake or Twindra's ability mm. and keep the attack going. So I will tell you right now, it is more beneficial for you to use Tsunami right now, because I am telling okay. you I have a Gorgon's gaze face down. Okay. Um, Does that kind of make sense what I'm saying it's the most yeah. complex interaction in Elestials right now is the attack step into battle step interaction so got it pause me if that so, that's not clear no i understand so i will cast the tsunami yep and then i will play that to yeah yep and it will also oh, turn your twin oh, just got it yep but since okay. I'm in my battle phase, I can't change positions, and since I just played Logon, etc., I wouldn't be able to anyway. Okay, so then I destroy the Tsunami now. Yep, and your Twindra also goes to defense, since it's not water enchanted. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. So then is that and then the that'll turn then? be the end of my turn, yep. Okay. And you can... Okay, I just drew an Aeolus. Okay. Aeolus is a very good card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it basically lets you search out any one cost win card in your deck. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think. So the best ones you could search out right now, there's a P-Gust that you can use to destroy runes. Uh, there's Sorlet that lets you change the battle position of Elestrals. There's Exaltair that lets you, you've already played one, lets you burn for damage. There's Hydrake, which is the one cost form of Twindra. Um, I think there's Aramare in that deck. Not super relevant here. Okay. So, one thing to note about Wind is Wind is very, very versatile, but mm -hmm. very expensive. So, you notice Aeolus will yeah. cost you two to search. Yeah. Kind of expensive, but you also have tons of options in that search. Right. Okay. <laughs> So I'll go ahead and cast the Aeolus. And then I use the secondary effect. Yep. So, so would it be smart to put all four on? Uh, generally, most people either put one or three on Aeolus. So one Why would basically that? mean you could use the effect once. Three, you could use it twice, this turn and next turn. Okay, got it. Uh, so, so I'll do... You're generally kind of hedging your bets of whether or not you're going to need the extra search, or if your opponent might be able to destroy the Aeolus, and then you lose the spirits from it, and so forth. It's kind of the, the decision making there. Okay. Since I'm not in the greatest board state right now, do you think I should do three then? Uh, I would probably, in your position, do one and find P-Dust. Okay. Dust. Okay. Because if you put the extra spirits on, I do still have the Lodagon you have to deal with. And my Lodagon, okay. if I get another Ambrosia or Golden Apple, can just destroy Aeolus. Got it. 
Okay, so then I can use the secondary effect disenchant to Yep. Got it. And then search my deck for any one wind. Yep, so uh there's P Gust or Sorlet, Exaltaire, etc. I think P Gust might be the most useful in this case. Um, just to destroy my back row. Yeah. Um, Sorlet would be okay, but Sorlet doesn't really help you against Lodagon here. Um, trying to think what else would be useful. I, I can't think of too much else that would be useful in one cost in the base deck right now. One second. I'm trying to read the cards in my deck but it won't let me zoom in yeah i don't know if it lets you zoom in when you're browsing your deck I, um, um, let me look up let me look up the cards real quick <laughs> so i can see what i'm looking at all good okay so you said p gus would be the one to get p gus is good because that'll let you destroy a rune and i do have a i have two runes in play one of which i told you already is gorgon's gaze so you have a 50 50 at getting it mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Gorgon's Gaze is like the biggest weakness of Pantera. So yeah. Pantera decks are kind of like a tier 1.5 deck right now because of Gorgon's okay. Gaze. <laughs> Got it. So it received one wind, so I will destroy. You want to destroy that one wing wing nudge nudge? Okay, I'll destroy the one closest to your spirit deck. Oh damn, how'd you know? Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh let me I'm just gonna quickly put Gorgon's gaze into the board so you can read it again real fast. If I can remember to hit manage instead of browse. So Gorgon's gaze targets an Elestral, and then if it has an effect on the chain, so if its effect is activating, you can negate it. Until the end phase, the Elestral is suppressed and cannot receive enchantments. Tag Nexus Ascend. So if I use yep. that on your Twinger, right? It would make it so your yep. Twinger wouldn't be able to use its effect to find Pantera out. Okay. Is not not bueno for you, anyway. <laughs> right. So the Aeolus stays. Um... It's also probably better to have Pegas in defense position here when you cast it. Right, 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 right. Um, you'll notice when you go to cast an Elestral, there's the option of uh, attack and defense instead of face up, face down. Got it. Pegas is generally always uh, better in defense unless you know you're attacking over your opponent's stuff that turn. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think that is my turn. Do you want to put Twinger into attack position? I, 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 oh, you. okay. I thought I could just, uh, sorry. No worries. We're learning. Yeah, so again, you use yeah. Tsunami on your turn. You can still change its position this turn if you want to put it back in attack position. Generally, Twinger's better in attack position. Okay, so um, I can change the position. Yep, so if you click the card, this should be each Elastro only once. Got it. Yep. I thought it was just one change position for my entire board, but I understand yep. now. Um, and then this Aeolus, you'll notice it's uh, one cost. It no longer has spirits on it. It would be destroyed for being under enchanted. Okay. Got it. Um, I was Things are making sense. I'm, Any questions? Yeah. Not yet. So I can't really attack anything. So I just end my turn. Okay. And it, so I think it's the last one. Thing I okay, that's the other really good card against Pantera. So I'm gonna just put that uh, face down real quick. <laughs> I forgot. So Gorgon's Gaze, and then the other card that counters Pantera really well is Shield of Achilles, which bounces things when you attack with them. Okay. Um, I'm going to. Put my Ladagon into attack position. And I'm going um, to I, go I into battle. So let's I'm going to destroy. I'm actually going to give you the option here. 
I'm gonna destroy your Twindra. You want okay. a special cast of Pentair? Yes. Okay. So would I just? So you destroy Twindra. Right. And, and then you can search for Pentair in your deck. I just got. Let me see if my. Got it. And then cast. I I went. Yep, that's exactly how you do it. And just make sure you shuffle your deck after. And I put it right. It's 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 like when you're playing, it makes like oh, I search my deck. Let me shuffle quick. Yeah. Whenever so shuffle isn't mentioned in search cards. I should mention uh, it's capital. always when you search your deck, you shuffle after. Right. It's right. Always the rule. It just saves text to the card. But yeah, the the app doesn't shuffle automatically for you, unfortunately. Right. Like when I'm playing IRL, I'll I'll do that, but just not used yeah. to the. It's yeah. Remembering shuffle. to do that on the app is always a little finicky. Yeah, uh, and with that, I will end my turn. Okay. But just kind of see how wind gets super expensive here, where you just had to fully recast Pantera with another three. Mm -hmm. you know? So wind again is very strong, but expensive. But you get so many options to choose from, which is right. useful. Yeah, I have a temporary instant that I need to focus on. So, sorry, I'm reading cards real quick. No worries, take it down. So I have two choices here. I can attach another wind to my Pegas to destroy another one of your runes. Yes. Or I also yep. have a glide stale that I can ascend onto it that gives it I mean that's plus five attack. So yeah glide stale is you can expend one wind to give it five attack and if you ascend it over an air which is another card in your deck it would get to attack twice. Um yeah that's a tricky situation to to choose A or B. <laughs> um, yeah. in one case you obviously get another attacker. In the other case you get to stop back row. And I have two face down cards, so it's that's a toss up. Even like if I was in your shoes and I didn't know what my opponent had face down, that is a pretty large toss up. Okay, when it says expend, that's from your spirit deck. Expend from my from my spirit deck. Okay. Yes, expend is always from spirit deck. Disenchant okay. is from board. Got it. Um, yeah, it's pretty much it. Expend, disenchant, nexus. I guess technically, but. Perceive we are going over all that, so got it. But if I play the glide still, there's a chance you have another one of those uh what is it? The two cost counter room. Yeah, so there's uh I will say there's a lot of runes in the game, especially in the meta that stop attacks from happening okay so gorgon's gaze can stop an attack tsunami you've seen already can stop an attack shields of achilles can stop attacks and bounce and altro stars can put things in defense to stop an attack so there's a lot of cards that can actually stop attacks yeah um again especially in the meta there's usually each deck runs about seven to ten cards that can stop an attack on average they're one mm -hmm. of the best cards in the game right now Okay, so I think it would be smarter for me to just try to destroy one of your brutes right now. That's a fine play. I think okay. either play is good. I think Enchanting Pegas again is better. Sorry, you cut out for a second. Uh, both both plays are good, either Ascending or Enchanting. I think Enchanting the Pegas is a little bit safer, at least yeah. for your Pantera. Uh, it's less okay. likely to cause the Pantera to die by destroying a rune. Quote unquote. Okay. So I'll do that. I will destroy 
I'll go for the rune closest to your spirit deck again. Okay. That was a good choice. So let me just put this face up so you can read it. This is one of the cards I just mentioned. It's Shield of Achilles. It can only be cast when you declare an attack. And then I can expend um, spirits right. equal to the card that I'm stopping the attack. So if you attack a Pantera, this is one, plus I expend three, making it basically a four cost. And it would bounce your Pantera to your hand. So that's a very good card to get rid of. Okay. It's another one of the, like, silver bullets against Pantera. Yeah, so then... I think my main phase is done. I have an Ambrosia, but I really don't want to play that right now. That just benefits you. (laughs) I will tell you right now, that's the smartest thing you've said the entire time. (laughs) Because you have no idea how many experienced players just rip an Ambrosia and forget about your Tyre Lodigon, and I just go, okay. Yeah, I (laughs) I've had it. I've had it for in my hand for a while. I've just been waiting until I can get this uh, yeah. gone out of here. Hundred percent. Again, there's a lot of people who forget that when I'm playing them. Yeah. Because um, not a lot of people play the the fruit deck. Uh, personally, yeah. I play it probably like eighty percent of my games. So it's just interesting to watch how many people accidentally run into it all the time. I'm gonna. I'll try. To yeah. Okay. So now I'll go into my battle phase. Okay. And then I will attack with my Pinter oh. into. This is going to be. So it's highlighting your Ash Rabbit and your Sphere deck, but it's not highlighting your Latigon. It's a little weird. It should let you do it still. Okay, got it. I wasn't sure there was like an effect that I missed or anything. No, no, uh, you shouldn't have. Uh... Uh, experimental effects on anyway. It's sometimes a little bit wonky, the decoration. Got it. So, in your attack step, I'm actually going to cast my own Tsunami here. Uh, Just put everything into defense. Yep. Cool. And then... Since that's that, I just end phase. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm going to put this card face down. Hmm. I don't want to do this. Pantera is eight. For the longest time, I don't know why, I always think Pantera has seven defense, or three defense, not eight. I think it's because I just always misread it in the past. <laughs> yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Well, let's start by actually. I'm going to enchant my rabbit with my normal for turn. I'm going to look at the top three again. Oh, that's exactly what I want to see. So I'm going to grab this Ambrosia. And that's pretty much probably going to be the game here. So I'm going to cast Ambrosia. Which will let me recover three. If I can remember to hit manage. And then Lodagon's effect will trigger. Yep. I'll use Lodagon to destroy your Pantera. Got it. Now your Pantera has an ability you can use here, if you so choose. Right. So okay, you... so I can do that, but unfortunately I don't have any more wind spirits, so they'll just all be disenchanted. You could, uh, it would be misenchanted. So you could, in theory, summon an army of Hydrakes and Twindra's misenchanted on your board if you wanted to. Okay. If you wanted to. I don't yeah, know a... how beneficial that would be. Yeah, my deck is already really low. I'll, I'll go ahead and destroy the Pantera. I guess it wouldn't hurt to do one. Okay. 
What do you think? So, let me think. I know you have Glide still in your hand, which has seven attack, even if you misenchant it. Um, yeah. I don't think what else is in the deck. Like losing Pantera is kind of the death sentence with the starter deck because your only other like right. finisher is Glide Stale. Yeah. Um. So you know I'm going to be able to destroy at least one of your Lashfuls in battle. You'd have one in play. I think playing one Hydrake at minimum is a decent option to allow you to possibly ascend into Glidesdale and then kind of attack yeah. back. It looks like I only have one twin. What is it? Twindra? Yeah, you should have one Trindra and three Hydrake left in your deck. Unless you have any in your hand. Because uh, the starter decks have one three drop, two of the two right, drops, and three of the one drops in them. My I do my, uh, not have any of the first stage left in my I did deck. The, I went to the site where it, you I should have three hydrate. I don't think you played a single one yet. Unless they're all in your hand out. somehow. <laughs> so I went they're not in my hand. Let me look at my. He looks like a little here. fat white football with a hydra head. <laughs> it's the best uh, way to describe how he yeah. looks. Yeah, yeah, I lied. My bad. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, very much the chunky baby brother yeah, of all the other ones. Uh, okay. And you only want to summon one? Yeah. Alright, so then it's still my main phase. I'm going to... Put this into uh, attack position, team, uh, and I'm going to actually attack that's over P-Gust. I don't want you destroying runes anymore. S U L A S. There we go. Are we having a good day? Okay. Um. So your outs here are basically you can so you can potentially ascend Glidesdale and crash with the Lodagon and trade. You can attack over Ash Rabbit and hope I have no way to destroy your um your Glidesdale with an effect in a later turn, or if you I think Boombat is in that deck, maybe. Um I don't think of much else. I can't remember what's in the the wind deck as far as outs. Yeah. So I have that Good lights, dude. I just have a swordlet in my hand right now. Did you have no more wind, right? Right. Yeah, that's kind of the... I will say the hardest part about learning Leshals, once you know how to play the game, is learning how to manage your spirit deck really Managing. well. Especially with wind, because again, wind is just super expensive, but has really good abilities. Yeah. So I guess I will ascend... The Hydrake into a Glide Stale. Okay. So, because it's misenchanted, it's just a 7 5. Yeah. So. If I'm attacking you and you have the same number, what happens again? So if they have this, if two Elestials have the same attack stat, they will both die. Okay. So you could either attack Ash Rabbit and risk uh, your Glide Sail basically getting removed by some removal card of mine. Or you can attack my Lodagon to make sure you get rid of my Lodagon, but you lose your... Glidesdale. I think I want to. I think I want to attack the Lodagon because I just want to play this Ambrosia in my hand, so that I don't run out of my. Spirit. I was gonna say if you attack Lodagon here and on my turn I just turn Rabbit, then I would kill you. But you do have Ambrosia in hand; that's an option. But remember, my Rabbit yeah. will be able to just turn to attack position and attack your deck directly if you have nothing in play. Right. So pros cons. It's not really a great choice here. You're not in a good spot in general. Yeah. You are playing the starter deck. You, it's your first game. It yeah. takes a little bit of time. So, Okay. I think I'm just going to attack the Lodagon. Okay. Get that 
that out of there. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, 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 sorry. Pause. No main phase two. I forget this sometimes too. So you, oh. yeah, so you wouldn't be able to cast Ambrosia this turn. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. Something's not adding up here. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to cast Ambrosia this turn. So that would not be a great decision. Okay. Is there a way for me to undo that then? Oh, well, yeah. We're, we're in a learning game. Takesy Baxies are okay. free. No, I wasn't sure if the game would let me undo that or. Yeah, again, so pretty much everything's manual. So I don't have to actually respond to you attacking. Okay, got it. So yeah, in this situation, attacking over the Ash Rabbit and then hoping I have nothing else, probably the better option. Okay. Then I will attack the Ash Rabbit. All right. And sorry, I forgot to end my turn. No worries. There. <laughs> uh, Revenge of the Ash Rabbit. Oh, uh, you got another one? Yep. Great. Right. Ash Rabbit defense. Let's look at the top three. And that is an earthquake. So I will take that earthquake. And we will cast said earthquake to destroy your glide sail. Got it. And then I'll attack you for two with my Lodagon, putting you at one. Now you could cast Ambrosia on your turn, and I have nothing to destroy. <laughs> That's an option. I guess so. Um, but How you, do I discard my spirits? So you just hit, click your deck, Ex hit uh, expend, and then hit two. So yeah, got it. And then select what you want. Expend. Got it. Um, but yeah, unless you... I'm trying to think if there's... Let me go look up. I don't think you have any outs left in that deck off the top of my head. Unless... Um, yeah, boom bat. Gotta go. I gotta. I should have pulled up the deck list earlier. Uh, wind. Sorry. Oh, you do have two boom bat in that deck. I don't know if or resting your laurels. No, oh, that wouldn't work because I have rapid in play. Yeah, so unless you have boom bat in your hand, I think you game I over. Do not. Then it's gonna be game over probably. All right. Even if you Ambrosia back up to three, you play like one Elestral attack into it, yada yada yada. Yeah. All right. Then I will concede then. All right. So how are you feeling so far? You kind of I'm pick feeling... it up. You get it. Yeah, I'm feeling better. Um. Um. You good? Yeah. What is the best way for me to like find what's competitive? Yeah, so let me go onto Twitter real fast. Go find this infographic really quick. With my super slow internet, since I'm technically streaming right now. <laughs> As it looks. Alright. So, after every tournament, usually within about 24 hours on average, they drop the most played cards and the most played decks. Uh, here okay. we are. So let me go and save these images and pull them up quick. So tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, Saturday, there's going to be a um, uh, webcam tournament, which means with paper cards. Those are usually okay. the more appropriate decks to look at because on the digital apps, let me pull it up real quick. On the digital tournaments, oh, I went to decks not catalog, didn't I? You, I'm also on my tablet right now, so you see like all the, uh, gotcha. all the bars are kind of messed up. Kind of, like, I think you have the same issue on blue stacks. But if I go to catalog, yeah, there are cards in the app right now that are actually part of Frostfall, like Avalanche. 
that they released mm-hmm. early in the app just to have a little bit of fun. Got it. So the app tournaments aren't considered as quote unquote competitive because it's a format that technically doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, I see. So like they added Nemesail to the app and <clears throat> Co Magma, which are all in Frostfall. Uh, so generally looking at the webcam, usually better uh, cards, but let me go pull up these images quick so you can see them and we'll talk about them. Uh, sort of. Um. So we'll start with the bike cards and then we'll go over the decks because the bike card is pretty indicative of telling you kind of what the meta is or rather what makes up a good meta deck. I didn't yeah. grab that thing. I'm stupid. I grabbed the wrong image. <laughs> I'm trying to do these things while talking to you. So <laughs> I'm like okay. half paying attention to what I'm grabbing. So we'll start with the, uh, we'll just start with the top cut representation stuff. All right, so there is a full tournament representation. All right, so you see that, right? Yep. Yeah, so you have Thunder Nexus, Earth Beatdown, Water Control, Water Midrange, Wind Toolbox, other archetypes. Now, this was an app tournament, so it did have some of the set two cards in it. But going over Thunder Nexus is considered probably one of the top tier decks right now, if not the best deck in the archetype or in the format, sorry. Mm-hmm. And it generally goes over. Um, it's so. Let me backtrack. The best part about Thunder right now for Thunder Nexus is the fact that there's really good receive effects in Thunder, like Astrabit, which you saw. And a card called Toxian here, which is when it receives one or more thunder, your opponents expend one. So basically burns your opponent for one damage. Yeah. So the deck is built around Toxian and Astrabit, where you kind of slowly generate value, and then Nexus Spirits with a card called Spark It. Uh who is Where is he? Barkit is currently considered one of the most degenerate cards in the game because it's really good. Um, it's a little inconsistent, but it's very strong when it goes off. So Sparkit here, it's a 4-1 for 1 Thunder. You can Nexus up to 2 Thunder. When you do, you can look at your opponent's hand and discard a card. Mm. So what Thunder Nexus does is usually get Astrabit or Toxin in play. Zeus, which is the Thunder Divine Rune in play. Load up spirits onto Zeus, and then the next turn you play Spark It, where you then Nexus spirits from Zeus to either Astrabit or Toxian, rip a card from your opponent's hand, and either get an extra card to hand with Astrabit, or deal an extra damage to Toxian, and kind of tries to cycle and do that on repeat. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's a bunch of little thunder synergies that kind of trigger each other. Got it. When it says Nexus up to two, can those two go anywhere on the board or do they both have to go to the same elestral always from one source to one location okay got it so it can be from so always it usually is like one or two off a divine rune to an elestral but you can move from one elestral to another elestral making sure that elestrals aren't distant or miss under enchanted ah words are hard under enchanted otherwise get destroyed uh, El Cabulo in chat says, yeah, having not just hand knowledge, but also the ability to hand rip is really good. Yes. So Spark It is like, if there's a short list of cards to ever get banned, Spark It's probably number one or number two in that short list because okay. you do have a roughly 10% chance to open Spark It and Zeus in your opening hand, which means if you're going first, you play Zeus, Spark It, Nexus to Spark It, and take a card from your opponent's hand before they even get a chance to respond. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which makes it really, really good. And then you can see what else they're doing with the rest of their hand. So Spark yeah. It... Every other turn, Spark It's extremely fair, uh, extremely fair. Turn one with Zeus, extremely unfair. And that's kind of the argument why people say, like, that no one wants to see Spark It, but it's also not always strong enough to see play. It's just, turn one, it's great. <laughs> like, it's really, so really like- good turn one. 
Would you want a mulligan to try to get that combo turn one then? No, it's not not consistent enough. It's okay. it's exactly you have three spark it and three Zeus in your deck. It is exactly nine point six percent chance of opening it in your hand. Okay. So, it's not worth a mulligan because in theory you're mulliganing about four or five times before you're likely to see that, yeah. and then you're at all of a sudden ten spirits and you're gonna die. Right. Um. So that's like the top deck right now is spark it ash rabbit zeus toxian plus uh altar of the stars is the other nexus card you run on that deck so okay this works like a miniature tsunami where you pay one you can then nexus one and if you do you change position of elestral so this is used as the defensive option to protect your cards from attacks where now you have zeus in play you have like your ash or spark it in play you'll use this when they declare an attack turn their attacker into defense position to stop the attack from happening, and then, again, either burn with Toxian or get an extra card to hand with Ash Rabbit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so it's, where would I find, like, a good deck list? Uh, you literally just go into Discord, and you go down to uh, either tournament general or deck building discussion, or competitive discussion in God. Discord, and just go, hey, I'm looking for a Thunder Nexus deck, and you will get like 30,000 people giving you decks. It might take you a little bit, but people will give you the deck list because most people post their decks cool. um, at the end of tournaments. You can also it. probably Thank just you. filter up through competitive, and you'll see the deck list just there. People just like to post them and say, hey, this is what I ran. Um, yeah. The next deck. I see. So Earth Beatdown is kind of the um, the contentious, also best deck in the format. So Thunder Nexus, Earth Beatdown are kind of like the best two decks. Not to say they don't have their counters, but Earth Beatdown is an aggressive Earth attacking deck. I think it's fairly straightforward from the name. We try to keep the names pretty uh, pretty focused on what the deck's doing. Mm -hmm. So Earth Beatdown, uh, this is Viserys here. So let me go pull up Viserys. Generally, uh, it's a very go-wide, aggressive body Earth deck where you use cards like Viserys, Tectoris, uh, Equal Links to generate a ton of card advantage. Uh, well, I've been away from the game for a few months, but did it ever make changes to the Nexus rule regarding Sparky being able to use Billy Nexus and Spirits from itself even if it gets sent to the Underworld? Yes, El Kabula, there's a whole blog post about that. Um, if you go to Elestral's news and scroll down a bunch, there's a whole blog post about it. But yeah, if it Nexus is away from itself and has no longer the correct spirits on it, it will not activate the second part. That's pretty advanced. I didn't mention that here, <laughs> Alolan, yeah. but... All good. Um, just for clarity, since I mentioned it so you don't get confused... In the past, if you used a card that said, like, Spark It, where it's Nexus from itself, and you removed all the spirits from it in that Nexus, it would have still triggered its second part. Mm. But now the current ruling is that it's no longer properly enchanted. The second part wouldn't activate. Got it. It's kind of niche, but <laughs> it's, uh, it is relevant for Elkwila's question in chat. So, uh, But Got let's go over Earth. Uh, beat down right now because we're going to come into another Nexus Celestial and I want to talk about Nexus Celestials too there. So this deck is pretty aggressive. The star of the show is Viserys here. It's a 4-2 for one Earth. It realistically is a 5 attack Celestial though because for every Viserys in play it gets 1 attack. Yeah. When it destroys an Celestial in battle you can special cast a Viserys from your hand or deck in defense position. So it kind of just, once you okay. get a t an attack in with it, it'll summon its buddy, it'll go to 6 attack, and then it has a buddy in defense. Now your opponent has to either deal with the defense one or the attack one, and it kind of swarms the board from there. So it becomes this very aggressive. I have all these little guys trying to punch in. Okay. So he's uh, kind of with Ash Rabbit, one of the strongest cards right now in the one cost slot. That a lot of people run, even if they're not running an Earth deck, just because if you can land one or two attacks with Viserys, you get a ton of tempo. But as you okay. kind of saw with the last game, it's hard to usually get attacks in consistently. Yeah. Uh, the next star of the show in the Earth deck, or rather one of the three cards in as the star of the show, would be Tectoris. 
though Tectoris is a 3-2 for one Earth, and he gets one attack for every Earth enchanting it on the field. Okay. So usually what you do is you play Tectoris, and it would be a 4-2. You play Demeter behind it, and all of a sudden Tectoris has like 7 attack immediately. Oh, wow. Right? Because it's all the Earth on it, on the Demeter, on your opponent's side of the field, making it really good in the mirror match. It yeah. gets really big. If you run like the Earth Stadium, this plus the Earth Stadium is instantly six attacks. So Tectoris gets really high attack sets really fast, making it another really efficient, aggressive body, which is the whole shtick with Earth Beatdown. Okay. Uh, the next card that people run three of in the deck is Equilinx, wherever he's hiding. I'll just search him. So Equilinx is your kind of answer to runes in the deck. So it's got four, three stats, which is all right. But then you can mm -hmm. Nexus up to two Earth. When you do, you can target and destroy a rune. So you use Equilinx with Demeter to kind of, you know, just like with Spark it, you move spirits onto it and destroy things. So Equilinx kind of sets up to let your Viserys attack over things. So remember how we constantly stopped attacked with counter runes? Yeah. Equilinx yeah. you play first, try to stop, try to start popping your opponent's back row, protect the equal links until you can get Viserys out, and now all of a sudden you can start kind of punching in and going wide from there. So equal links is mm -hmm. another key staple in the Earth aggressive beatdown deck. And then Demeter is again the other necessary piece there, where Demeter is like Zeus, except instead of giving minus three, minus three, gives plus three, plus three for Earth. Okay. So that's the whole general the way Earth Beatdown usually works is you play Demeter, you play Equilinx, try to pop back row, try to protect your Equilinx, and then drop Viserys and Tectoris is behind it to go aggressive from there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's arguably the best deck in the format, along with Thunder Nexus. Um, other kind of key cards in it, some people run Foley Forest. Not everybody runs it in the Earth Beater deck. Um, you get access to Earthquake and Element, which is just, you know, destroying an Illustral. Always good. Yep. Uh, other tools you get in Earth Beatdown is a card called Rummagem, which is the only Illustral that is in its element that searches its element. So there's a bunch of Illustrals that allow you to search for Illustrals that cost one spirit of a specific element. Rummagem's yeah. the only one that does it in Earth, and it's an Earth card, giving it more synergy with things like Foley Forest, etc. Okay. Uh, it also means you don't have to extend out into other elements, because most people play about two to three elements in their decks. The yeah. more elements you play, the less, you know, the more difficult it becomes to manage your spirits. So Earth Beaters also gets the benefit of being mostly in Earth and not having to worry about your spirit management as much, which helps. Okay makes it a little bit easier to pilot on the spirit deck side while trying to focus more so on the actual board gameplay. Got it. Um, always nice when you don't have to think as much. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, the next, water control. I don't really have a list for this, but usually water control is generally playing a lot of big defensive water lustrals, specifically like Mustation here. So let me go pull them up quick. Mustation. So, Mustation's claim to fame is that he has six defense. He is the highest out of defense at one cost in the game, making okay. him really good to ascend out of. So, there's kind of two, or th well, no, there's like three water control decks. There's like this water pure control deck that someone played in the last tournament that went pretty well. Sky Guy, if you have the water control list, I will love to have it quick to pop up on stream. Um, but generally, water control uses things like Mistation with high defenses, and then the payoff for kind of the water control stuff is a card called Galaxy. So it's this guy, which turns all your defense, high defense stuff into high attack stuff. Okay. And it'll swap any water and change celestials attack with this defense. So this says it's a 2-5, right? Yeah. In reality, it's a 5-2. Got it. So what you can do is just, you know, play defensive cards, use your runes to kind of control the game, use earthquakes, etc. to remove cards, and then all of a sudden you turn all your big defensive cards into attackers. Kind of what you're doing. Yeah. Now, that's pure water control. There's a variant of water control uh, where there's 
Well, there's two variants. There's one water control deck that goes into a Thunder Splash to go into Sonicore. So because Mistation stats are just flat stats, a lot of people will play Mistation in defense with either a water or with either a wind or a thunder spirit off the bat. So you can ascend into Sonicore is one option. Which okay. it can't you can't change it you cannot chain to Sonicore's cast, it means they can't use something like Poison Nip to Arrow to destroy it or a counter rune to answer it or stop it. And then while it's an attack position, nobody can play counter rune, so you can basically go from a station into this, no one can respond to it, and you can start attacking with it over all the counter runes. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to backtrack real quick. So we're talking about metas, right? The yeah. true definition of the current meta is counter runes. Got it. Counter runes are currently what defines what makes cards good or not right now. And the more counter runes, generally the better. And the better you can deal with counter runes, the better your deck's going to run. So something yeah. like Sonicore is a super anti-meta staple. It's why water control does well, is because water has lots of ways to shut down counter runes and lots of ways to ascend into cards that also deal with counter runes, like Sonicore. And then the other option in the wind variant of the control deck, you can go into a card called Falcane. And Falcane is allows you to just blow up the entire back row. So there's a water thunder control that kind of goes into Sonicore. And then Water Wind that kind of goes into Falcane and some other options. Okay. Sometimes you can run Pantera in that deck on the side as well. But they're very anti-meta decks where it's just, I'm dealing with the back row, so I have free reign to do what I want on the board. So that always yeah. kind of sees some amount of play. Uh, let me pull up. Sky Guy just sent me a control list, so we can pull that up and show that off. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, water Control... Guy Guy's a really good player too, so I'm listening to him when he okay. says this is his list that's good. <laughs> I don't play water <laughs> control, so. Alright, well, let's make this bigger. I I was playing against him with Fruit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fruit is like a tier 2.5-ish deck. It's like bottom of tier 2. Uh, it's good, but it's inconsistent. Uh, I see. But it gets some buffs in the next set. So this is a water control list, right? So we have Galaxy here. Foamy is a floater, so when Foamy gets destroyed, you can special cast a one-cost water Elestral, so you can get, like, Mistation or Galaxy out. And with uh, Foamy, you can also miss enchant the thing. So in, like, the, the Wind variant that gets Falcon, and the Thunder variant that gets Sonicore out, you can let your Foamy die. Special cast one that like Mistation and Defense with the wrong element and then ascend into it. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, you'll see Viserys is here. So even though it's a water focused deck, we have Viserys, which is just a good aggressive attacker. We also see Sorlet here. Sorlet's another good aggressive attacker. It allows you to do some position manipulation, makes it pretty good. Teliquarius searches water Elestrals. Fair talk what you saw. It's good at getting over things like Ash Rabbit. And then you'll notice just counter rune, counter rune, counter rune, counter rune. <laughs> yeah. Um, the general rule of thumb also is that two costs and three costs are not great. Because if you lose a two or three costs, you're losing a lot of spirits. But you still see things like Falcane, Sonicor, Pantera show up. But you usually don't see things like Trifernal, Majesty, Scent Harbor... Like other three drops, unless you can get them out really easily, they don't really show up that often. Yeah. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And then what else do we have for deck archetypes here? Water mid range, pretty much not too different from water control. I don't know the difference between the two. Uh, why has there been a rise in play of resting on your laurels? So. I think resting on your laurels is seen more play. So resting on your laurels is kind of like Earthquake. Let me pull that up. So we saw Earthquake just destroying Elestral, right? Two cost Earth. Mm -hmm. Resting your Laurels is the other invoke removal card in the game right now. So this Resting your Laurels can only be cast if an opponent has at least two or more enchanting spirits than you do. Target and destroy the opponent's Elestral with the least number of enchanted spirits. So Kabul is just asking why is it seeing more play now? And I think because A, it's cheaper than Earthquake. It's in any element. And there's a lot of Earth Beatdown and Thunder Nexus in the meta. So those cards play Divine Runes, 
They'll put the divine runes into play, meaning they have tons of spirits on board, making them pretty commonly to have at least two Elestrals more than you if they go first. Because mm -hmm. they're going to play Zeus with a bunch of spirits. So it makes rushing the laurels pretty much always online, and it's cheaper than Earthquake. Uh, it might not seem like a big deal, but going from one cost to two cost is a massive change. Yeah. Um, it, technically, right, you can just look at it, it's like, oh, it's a 100% increase in cost. Uh, it's It feels worse than that. There's a card called Drops of Leith. Let me pull it up. Just to kind of explain how a card can go from being really good to really bad with a one cost change. Uh, it's a good going second tool. It's just a good going... Uh, it's good against going the best decks in format tool of Kabulo. So not necessarily going second, but just like if your opponent plays a, a deck with Divine Runes and you don't, it's a better option most of the time than Earthquake because it's cheaper and more efficient. Uh, but the, to go over cost, right? Drops the Leith here is a two cost. Let's just shuffle your hand back and draw new cards. In base set testing, this card cost one. And it got seen as a three of in almost every single deck. It was that good at one cost. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. At two cost, it sees almost no play. Interesting. And that's like the difference between something costing one and something costing two. <laughs> Right. Uh, so now Drops Elite it generally only sees play in decks that run a lot of Ascensions. So you can usually see it in something like Fruit. You see it sometimes in like Water Wind decks that want to go into two cost. But yeah, going from one to two is extremely relevant. Going from two to three isn't as important because that's increasing it by 50% cost. But yeah, a one cost to two cost is a huge change for a lot of decks. And it's like... It's part of the reason why something like Nectar of the Gods, uh, which I think you know what that card does, right? Yep. So Nectar of the Gods, right, draws two cards. It's a card that, like, people go, how can this card not be good if I can just cast it at any time? Because it costs two. It is the definition, this card, of a immediately, like, five out of ten card. Turn one and two, it's really good. Seeing more options is great, but you also have to remember that you're now casting less cards over the course of the game because you took more damage to you. It. Yeah. Um, I know we got a little off topic off the decks, but hopefully relevant stuff. Do you... <laughs> yeah, this is very, very helpful. Okay. Uh, the win toolbox. So if you want to see an example of a win toolbox deck, just look at the win starter deck. <laughs> okay. Um, it does have more counter runes. But generally the win toolbox is, so we went over the fact, I'm clicking the wrong button. Uh, let me just pull up wind real fast. Because basically everything in wind is relevant for wind toolbox. Uh, so you use Aeolus, right? You can search yep. for one cost wind elestrals. We already went over that generally two cost and three cost elestrals are not necessarily good. They're kind of difficult to use. So a lot of the game is played at the one cost slot. Aeolus lets you get any one cost wind elestral. The elestrals in wind are varied in effect and very good effects. So for example, you need to deal with the rune, I'll go find a P gust, right? You mm -hmm. need to deal with something in defense or attack that you can't get over, grab a sorlet and then just change the position and attack over it. Uh, you just want to get a little defensive. You can get something like Aramair, which has a high defense stat. Uh, the joke with Aramir is that it doesn't have a text box. Because mm -hmm. it is a 4-5. This is the highest combined base stat total of any card at one cost. So a lot of people, not a lot of people anymore, but a lot of people used to when they ran more stadiums, play Aramir's even without wind. Because if you play Aramir with any stadium, it becomes a 5-6. Where you just misenchant it with the stadium's element. Okay. So the joke is that Aramir doesn't have an ability just because its stats are that good. Um, we don't see mm -hmm. Aramir played as much anymore. Uh, if you want to get aggressive, you can use Exaltair to burn your opponent directly. So it's just you have all these options in Wind, which makes Wind Toolbox good. Okay. And then to finish with Wind, you generally will get like a Hydrake. And just one thing that people like to do with Hydrake is just, oh, you have an Elestral that has five attack in play? Let me attack it with my Hydrake. My Hydrake dies. Then I'm going to attack it with my Twindra and trade. 
And then I'm going to attack you directly with my Pentair. It's kind of the finisher of the toolbox deck. Mm -hmm. Some people like to go Nimbug with the toolbox, but Nimbug into Syracun into Stratomoth is generally slower than Pentair and a little bit more fragile. Yeah. But that's win toolbox. It's just grab the good win cards, play Olus, play a bunch of counter runes, play some control stuff, and just, again, oh, I need to deal with runes now, deal with runes, I need to deal with Leshals now, deal with Leshals, find everything you need. It's expensive, but you get so many options that paying those costs doesn't really matter as much. Uh, Kabulo, to backpack off the last point, that's why two and three drops have become really good. To justify using the resources needed to use them, yeah. Yeah, just twos and threes are just hard to use for a lot of reasons, unfortunately, but they're getting better in the next set. Uh, and then other archetypes. So let me go... So this is the entire tournament. I do yeah. have uh, the top cut from this tournament, which you're going to see pretty much the same stuff. Uh, top cut, this one. So Thunder Nexus, so top eight, right? So there was four Thunder Nexus in the top eight. There's one Earth Beatdown in the top eight, one Toolbox, one Water Midrange, and then this Divine Pile was like some nonsense that a really good player brought, and she just kind of decided to play some trolley stuff that actually worked out half decent. <laughs> so don't worry too much about Divine yeah. Pile. It was just oh, kind it. of something that snuck into Top Cut. <clears throat> uh, more special cop, more special cast option set two will help from one of. Yeah, special cast options are always good, and they'll be helpful, especially when you can accelerate to three drops and stuff. Um, but let me try to find the card-by-card -card representation really fast. And that will, I think, really help you understand why the meta is shaped how it's shaped right now. Because uh, they keep track of the most played cards in all the cards in the tournament. And it's really indicative of what you need to put in pretty much any and every deck to kind of be a bit competitive. One of those cards is Ambrosia. Um, Ambrosia is played as a two or three of in almost every single deck. Aha, here they are. So let me just uh, save this. Ba -ba -ba. And the next one for the top cut. Do you have any questions so far? I know we're kind of gliding through like a lot of nuances here to try to cover everything. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm understanding everything. Okay. Yeah, again, it's kind of like we're going over a lot right now, and I want to just, like, play more games yeah. for you to understand, but you had questions that I'm trying to, like, <laughs> context for. Um, yeah. Okay, so these are the card-by-card -card most played cards in the format, right? So, you see Ambrosia's played in, so this Tournament is 22 decks. So you see Ambrosia's played in every deck. <clears throat> Gorgon's Gaze was played yeah. in every deck. Tsunami's played in almost every deck. Earthquake, almost every deck. So on and so forth, right? And then you see Astrabit in almost every deck because Astrabit, as you saw, is just a really good advantage tool for cards. Elichik is seen in a lot of decks to find Divine Runes since Elichik searches Divine Runes. Um, literally just straight up, it just searches one Divine Rune out. I'll pull it up quick. And you notice how a lot of the top decks like to have Divine Runes? I don't know if Searching yeah. Divine works, but Search Elchick. So the reason Elchick sees a lot to play, even in non-Thunder decks, is because you can find a Divine Rune when you normal cast Elchick. So you find your Zeus, you find your Demeter, Poseidon, Hephaestus, whatever you need. Aeolus, again, like, especially in the Toolbox deck, you need to find Aeolus. Thunder Nexus, you need to find Zeus. Earth beaters beat down. You need to find Demeter. So Elichek sees lots of play. Shield of Achilles yeah. sees tons of play. Resting on your laurels sees a lot of play along with Earthquake because it's an option for cheaper, efficient removal. And Viserys is one of the best aggressive buys in the format. So you see a lot of play even outside of Earth decks. Does that make sense? Yeah. So do you notice, uh, or rather, you don't know the cards exactly yet, but Gorgon's Gaze. Counter rune, tsunami, counter rune, poison tipped arrow, counter rune, shield Achilles, counter rune, right? So uh, half mm -hmm. the cards here yeah. are counter runes. The next half of the cards is uh, earthquake removal, poison tipped arrow it's removal, resting on your laurels removal. Makes sense. People want to remove cards. There's not a ton of options to remove cards, so there's a lot of removal here. 
yeah. then the rest of it is all the utility stuff. So Ambrosia, it not Ambrosia. It's hard. In, I mean, most games healing isn't good. In Illustrials, Ambrosia is not just healing. It's fixing your colors so you get the right spirits into your spirit deck. It's also allowing you to cast more cards over the course of a game, which is why it's right. used in basically every deck as a three. Also, people need to play Divine Roots just by paying for the statue artwork and Shattered Stars. <laughs> oh, yeah. They made some really cool alt arts for the uh, Divine Runes in the Shattered Stars packs. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so Gorgon's Gaze... You know, like, see, Gorgon's Gaze average three per, Ambrosia average three per. There's not a ton of water in the meta, so roughly people play two to three in every deck. Estrabit, you generally pay three Estrabit if you can fit it. And with the Earthquake, like, you see all these are roughly average three pers just because the decks that you play them in are really good. Yeah. Now, when we switch over quick to the top cut representation, there's a little bit of a shakeup here, but it's still mostly the same. So in top cut, the top eight decks, you see Ambrosia, Earthquake, Gorgon, Tsunami. It's all pretty much the same. You see Zeus sneaking up since there was so much uh, <laughs> Thunder Nexus in the event. But then you see that all the counter runes are run as three ofs. Ambrosia, Earthquakes, all three ofs. You know, just all the good cards are three ofs. Um, so I want to. So now that we got through all that real fast, what does that mean for Elastrals being a fairly counter heavy meta? It actually means that even though we have um, like the best decks in the format being like Thunder Nexus, Earth Beat Down, these decks that we constantly see over and over again, the tier two, the tier like 1.5 area of the tier list, if you want to look at like all the decks in a tier list, which actually, uh, let me go pull up another image while I'm talking about that. Um, but the fact that we have all these really good removal counter options, etc., means that decks that normally wouldn't be able to compete actually have a pretty consistent chance of playing or playing them at a good level because we have all these kind of ubiquitous removal cards and counter runes and stuff that anyone can slap in a deck and be decent with. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's just because we have like half your deck is kind of the same between most decks. We just have this meta that really kind of lets you build anything that's coherent and do well with, which yeah. I really appreciate. It means that even though there's decks that are tier two, tier three, they can still compete well enough. I'm trying to pull up the Lestronauts on Twitter because they released, uh, they did a tier list. I did a t couple tier list videos, but theirs looks nicer than mine. So I'm trying to pull it up. Uh, there they are. Do, 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 do. Oh, actually, I don't even know if they posted it on Twitter. They might have just posted it in Discord, which makes it even harder to find. Okay, yeah, they only posted it on Discord. Dang. <laughs> that, that's a failure. Um, I'll see if I can find you a tier list later. But yeah, generally, just about any deck is viable. There's just decks that are more viable, and the decks that are more viable are decks that deal with counter runes and back row better. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to kind of go into deck building? Do you want to play another game? What do you want to do from here? I got about um, half an hour. Unfortunately, I do have to get off pretty soon, um, so I probably don't have time for that. Okay. Yeah, but um, I would definitely love to like have another like session like this if that was something you'd be down for sometime. yeah so uh i'm only free tomorrow and then next week i am free i believe wednesday thursday okay so feel free to hit me up then but i think that's enjoyable i liked it i hope yep. you enjoyed i hope you learned something <laughs> yeah i did I'll it's, definitely, uh... it's a lot to take in and we probably should try to play just more games it's easier to learn that way but i'm yeah. doing my best to answer all the questions you have <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was great. Um, I'll definitely be available next Thursday. I'll uh, try to get some games in with uh, some friends in the meantime. Yeah, and if you want, why don't you try looking through the card catalog, find a card that like you want to build around, and then maybe we could start you know, with the deck building next time, and we'll go over deck building okay. into playing and going from there. Sounds good. All right, cool. Thanks for coming.
This is yeah, enjoyable. Thanks for I had fun. Me. <laughs> of course. I did too. All I right. Appreciate it. Have a good one. I'll see ya. You too. Oh, what did someone else just say something? Quartzy. Hello. Hi, Wartsy. Hello. All right. I'm going to stop my stream here quick.